Norman Reedus just clapped for me. Okay, so look guys, we don't have a lot of time because we're gonna talk for about 20 minutes up here, then we're turning it over to you guys. So I wanna just bring everybody up fast. Greg, you're coming up, right? Okay, so let's start here. We're gonna start with Robert Kirkman. Come on up here, Robert Kirkman. After Robert, we have the fabulous Dave Albert. Come on, Dave. Where's that beautiful Gail Ann Hurd? Where's Gail? Come on, Gail. Where's my buddy, Greg Nicotero? Bring it up here, Greg. Scott M. Gimple, oh, excuse me, the sadistic Scott M. Gimple. <laughs> slightly, oh, slightly, sorry, I forgot that. Um, can I have Andrew Lincoln please meet me up here? Thank you. Uh, the better half of Norbet, Norman Reedus. You didn't know we're a thing? Everybody didn't know that? Um, the handsome and amazing Jeffrey Dean Morgan, please come up here. The beautiful Lauren Cohan, come darling. He plays Abraham Michael Cudlis, come on up here. He's so big now, he's taller than me, Chandler Riggs, where you at? Can I have Christian Soratos, please, in her beautiful cream dress? I need a playwright, is there a playwright in the room? Is Denai Gurira here? Award-winning playwright, excuse me. Can I have my favorite mullet wearing Josh McDermott, please? Can I have the man of a thousand voices, Ross Marquand, where are you? Get up here. The handsome Stephen Yoon, come on up here. Saniqua, 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 Martin Green, you need it. Okay, so while everybody comes up here, um, I'm sorry I keep popping my peas. Um, I'm gonna start with a few questions and then I'm gonna turn it over to you guys as I said before. So um, the first question I have is who died? Maybe Judas. So, who died? No one on this stage. No one on the. Everybody's on this stage. Nice. Wait, is, are it's they? A, it's a conundrum. Everybody on this stage lived, you guys. Okay. Um, let's chat about that last scene, you guys. Um, I heard, and this is for the, the actors, I heard that you guys all stayed for the entire shooting. If it wasn't, even if the camera wasn't on you, you guys all stayed to support everyone else's scenes. Is that true? They, yeah, well, we, uh, but only because we were forced to because we wanted to find out who died. <laughs> Seriously though, Josh, I did hear that you guys literally are very generous as actors and you guys stayed and made sure that everyone was supported even if the camera wasn't on you. Is that true? I mean, yeah, I think... Because uh, it's not the case on every not, show. It's, it's not. It's not, but it, it's also not the only uh, instance, you know, was that scene. Like, that's how we that's do how it all the time the because we support each other. I know why gonna... Josh is talking about it because he was the first to leave. <laughs> yeah, I was, I was back in my trailer. Um, no, it's very, I mean, you, we want to support each other. We know right. it makes the show better and the thing when is, you are acting a, a, across from your fellow castmate right. as opposed to a, a piece of tape. Right, and the reason I say it and making a point about it, you guys, is that that's not the case on every show. A lot of times you're acting to a tennis ball or a piece of tape, so that's, for a show this intense that you stay there for each other is beautiful. Okay, this question is for the producers. Um, when did you decide to make the finale a cliffhanger? Was that early on? Scott? It was quite early on. Yeah. It, it, was, uh, it was something we were discussing. But uh, yeah, it was, it was not a last minute decision. Mm -hmm. And you're reading. just said cut. <laughs> <laughs> Wait. We got, but we haven't shown. And what was that to build tension over the summer, or was it for people to be able to? What was your reason by saying this should be a cliffhanger? I mean, there's a few reasons. Story wise, and actually, Robert, you had said this on Talking Dead. Story wise, uh, in many ways, that season's story comes to an end when they are all put on their knees. Right. Um, uh, Geek-wise, and I could think of no more appropriate place to speak geek-wise. Um, thank you. <laughs> yeah, no, no I, loved you. I loved it. I loved yeah. it. I loved it. I loved it. Is just the stuff that we grew up with or, or were grown adults with, like, uh, you know, the board Lacuna, yes. Support yes. Or, or maybe go way back the classic Empire Strikes Back. Mm -hmm. uh, all this stuff, or even Lost, all these things, or comics, um, just things where the audience is invited to use their imagination for the wait and aren't provided with an ending, but rather a story to tell themselves. Yes. And there's nothing greater in the world that I hear about regarding the show is when strangers see each other on the street or sit next to each other in an airplane, or meet at lunch, and are talking about something common right. and nothing in common. Right. And there's a lot of people talking it's about a, It's water cooler there. moments. We don't have water cooler moments anymore. And so this is, you created that. With Making this. the world a little smaller. A little and smaller. And having people 
uh, have some commonality. Well, the way things are right now, it's a lovely thing. It is. And we are very privileged to. Yes. Uh, Andrew Lincoln. Hello. Hi. Hi. Um, despite Rick's efforts this year to kind of make everything okay, um, they kind of are not okay. No, they're, they're far not. From okay. So, does he feel defeated at this point in the sense that every this is the thing? I feel like he put everything he had into this year, making sure the Alexandrians okay. That went to hell, and now he decided even just all the roadblocks in that last episode. Every route he went down was a dead end. So where is Rick emotionally right now as he realizes he's put all these people into peril? Yeah, I think he's um, he's not a it's not a good space for Rick. Uh, he's everything that he's fought for, uh, you know, shed blood for people, you know, lost family for has been sort of irrevocably changed and mm -hmm. turned upside down by this guy in 24 hours. Yes. And I think that he's powerless uh, for the first time since he woke up mm -hmm. from the apocalypse. And, um, and, and yeah, that says a lot because yeah, he's, he's a lot of... He, and he's in fear of his life, his, ch his child's life, and all the people he loves. So, yeah, it's, it's a desperate position. And, uh, and I think that everything he thought has changed overnight. Yeah. 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 This is for uh, Josh. Um, Eugene started out this whole story. His arc was he was a coward. He was so afraid that he was lying every step of the way. In this last episode, he's become brave enough to actually put himself out there as bait. Um, do you believe in that moment Eugene has finally turned the corner where he is willing to die for his friends? Like he's at that place where he's no longer a runner, he's a fighter? Yeah, I don't know that that was the moment mm -hmm. that uh, he turned the corner, but uh, that, that was just another moment for him to display that, that newfound confidence that he had. And uh, that, that's exciting to see, you know, a guy who I feel like represents a lot of what we would, uh, most of us would be in the apocalypse if it ever happened, yeah. just someone with no skills and hoping someone protects them right. and they might die. And, uh, and then to become this man of action, this man who will step up in the face of danger. And uh, I think, you know, in those situations, you have to continue to do that, continue to build your confidence. And I think that was just another step in that direction at that moment. Awesome. Uh, Jeffrey, Dean Morgan, um, you're playing a bad guy, sort of. He kind of killed well, not really. somebody, possibly. In my mind, I'm in denial. So I, everybody's alive as far as I'm concerned. But you may have killed someone with a bat named Lucille. Um, how does it feel to play that character, to come onto the show at this point with all these wonderful people that have been working together for a long time, and then to play a character that is going to take one of them away from us? It feels great. <laughs> <laughs> um, I mean, I think it was, it was hard for all of us initially. I yes. mean, the, the introduction of, of Negan is, is hard, and I think it was hard for us as actors, I felt like, ooh, mm -hmm. they might not like me. And they don't, it, tur it turns out. <laughs> but to play that role for me yeah. is kind of a dream come Delicious, true. Delicious. Hey, oh, God, it's just, it's the most fun I've ever had in my life. And, I, and that's, that's fucking horrible for everyone sitting there. <laughs> yeah. But it is a blast. So, and, and, and this really is the greatest group of people I've mm -hmm. ever had the pleasure to work with and be a part of so you know it's a little bit of a catch-22 in there somewhere but i'm having fun and they're all awesome awesome yeah this is for lauren this is uh maggie cut her hair this year and i felt like it was a defining moment for her in some way and i don't know if that's just what i saw in it or is there something is there a reason in your mind that maggie said now is the time for me to start anew and shed layers and yeah precisely i think it was a um suit up Ah, get mm. ready. Yeah, and it's um, it's interesting, you know. At that point, I think the group felt that we were had a handle on what was out there, and we were ready to move forward. Yeah. Um, and sort of take control in a way that we wanted to. And yeah. um, and interestingly, as soon as she gets prepared for that next stage, it's war. She falls into the mm -hmm. pain that propels them on this terrible journey yeah. into the hands of this lovely man yeah so uh i think there's a message in there somewhere maybe we'll we'll find out what that yeah. is but yeah so yeah. yeah 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 um norman uh in your mind is daryl to blame for where they are now and how much is he to blame for where they are now 
Did he miss some things? Did he not catch some things that he normally would catch? I think, um, you know, that he slipped up a bit doing some things earlier. And I think there is a little bit of guilt that's with him uh, for a lot of things. I mean, as much as he relies on, you know, them, he, you know, he feels uh, that, if he, he feels good about the fact that they also rely on him, right? And, and it goes it goes both ways. So there is a little bit of that. I mean, with Denise and all that. And, yeah. Know, oh. This, I, you know, oh. it's it's a totally different world. And Denise Ruth actually said it really well uh, to me earlier. Denise she said, in the pink. She's yeah, in the pink back right there, is. Denise. But she, you know, the ending of last season wasn't really the ending of last season. It was the beginning of this season. Of this season. So there's a whole lot of mixed feelings bouncing all over the place right now. Okay. This is for... Uh, yeah, I would just like oh, to get in there, Scott. Rebut, rebut one get of in the there. points. I don't know if Daryl's screwed up. Uh, Daryl tried to help some people. He tried to help that yeah. gentleman, D. Yeah. He tried to help Sweet, gentle Sherry. Gentleman. And, and so the fact that he was trying to save some people, if that, uh, if that bit him on the butt... Um, I think that was out of benevolence. Got it. And that showed the kind of distance that Daryl has traveled in his life. You know, he could have been Merle, and yeah. uh, he's his own man. Okay, indeed. Um, this is for Ross and Steven, and this is, you know me, I like Minutia, and I watch very closely. In that last scene, uh, in the Lucille scene, um, I noticed that it appeared that each of you appeared to rise, you two in particular appeared to rise to the occasion as if, uh, if this is it, this is a moment that I'm willing to walk for my friends. Did I, um, is that a personal choice? Did I, first of all, did I make that up in my mind? And second of all, was that a personal choice you guys made as actors? Our legs were just really hurt. Really tired, yeah. you needed to stretch. I can't, bend, I can't kneel for that long. <laughs> you know what, you guys. Cramps. You know what you did as actors. It was really beautiful what you <laughs> did. And it's, it, it felt like to me that you guys had this moment where it's like, if it has to be me and it saves someone else, I think I think for Glenn that's a very uh, a true statement. I think um, in that particular moment, the things that are flashing through his mind are um, what's going on with my wife, uh, what's going to happen to our baby. Yeah. Uh, how do I prevent this from happening? Yeah. Um, and so yeah, there was a moment of defiance. There's a moment of just kind of bringing the attention more to him if he can have that happen. Yeah. Um, but thank you for noticing. I notice that. everything when I watch this show. I tell you, I do. <laughs> Russ? Yeah, I, th I think uh, all of us, I mean, Aaron feels a certain responsibility for this group. Yeah. And he, un, you know, maybe, maybe unnecessarily so, has a, has a great deal of, not, a, not guilt, but, but a feeling of like, man, I really screwed up by them getting to this place too. And he wants to make sure that they can, you know, safely get out of the situation, he realizes in that moment there's no way out. There's no way out. And uh, I think every single one of these people in the lineup would die for each other, honestly. Yeah. This is for uh, Sonequa, Michael, and Christian. This is a threefer. Um, Sonequa and Michael, what do you think it is about Sasha and Abraham's connection that led to love? What do you think they see in each other? Come on. Get in there. Oh, because she's gorgeous, because she's gorgeous. Smart, Thank strong. You. Mm -hmm. uh, I think um, for for Abraham, I think that early on the, the relationship between him and Rosita was for both of them out of convenience, um, and he taught her, and she learned, and she became an amazing soldier. <laughs> taught her what? What did he teach her? She became an amazing soldier. See, sometimes women just hear what they want to hear. <laughs> <laughs> which could be the reason I moved on. <laughs> um, no, I just, I, don't, I just think at, at some point you just can't deny what the heart feels. Yeah, I, I, we, see, we see a lot of similarities in each other, I, I think. Uh, we're both warriors. We both had the PTSD experience. Mm -hmm. And I think that... Uh, as Sasha, I looked across the way to him and saw that he was in a place that I just came from. And she wants to help him through it. Right, exactly. And, and, and I think that we see the, 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 the strength in each other. I think that's what pulls us to each other more than anything, is the strength and the, uh, 
just the, the, the compulsion to, to, to sacrifice. Yeah. I think we see that in each other as well. Um, and I feel that we are very much, you know, partners in war. Got it. And a love was birthed from that. I also don't think that he's necessarily not in love with Rosita. Well, I want to talk about that too, Rosita. I, does, Christian, does Rosita see this as the ultimate betrayal, or is she at that place where she's like, well, this has come to an end. She knew what this was from the beginning. No, I mean, I think it's the, I, I, I agree with Michael. You know, it, it was in a way out of, out of convenience, and after I taught him a few things and let him go on his merry she, way. She taught me wow. plenty. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, I think I think the breakup was a gift for both of them. I think especially for Rosita, I think that she had so much to offer as just an individual that not a lot of people got to witness. And for, for the character, yes, of course, it was traumatic and it was heartbreaking. But I think all in all, there was there was an underlying, there was a gift in that. And I think what's really cool for, for the audience and for fans of Rosita is that they got to see her on her own and they got to see that she was, she was yes, a soldier, but not just a follower. She yeah. was a leader and she was going to be able to show that to people being on her own. Okay, we are almost out of time, but I just, I wanted everybody to get a chance to speak. I, I want to ask Chandler this. In your mind, where is Carl emotionally right now? Because he's... Take, I gotta go. What? I, yeah, okay, well, let me add this moment with Chandler now. Um, after the relationship with Enid, um, he's got this new family unit formed with the fabulous Rashon. I named it, write it down. Um, and now his whole family is facing, I did, I named it. The whole family is facing uh, Megan and Lucille. So where is Carl right now in his mind? Honestly, um, yeah, I, you know, I, I Carl highly resented Negan before he even met Negan. Um, and I, I, I think that Carl is, is really just willing to do anything to protect everyone in, in the lineup. And um, he just wants to stand up against Negan, unlike Andy. No. Oh. I mean, I mean oh, hey, you did not. Did you see him in that, in that last scene? Oh, okay. Okay. Put, that, put that kid on a leash. See? <laughs> wow. Wow. That's changed everything. <laughs> really? yeah. Man. Okay. Deny. Um, hi, Deny. Hi. How was it doing this show and also being an amazing playwright at the same time? Go. Uh, um, uh, listen, I, I'm so, I just felt extremely uh, thankful. I'm, I'm a part of an amazing family and the am amount of support that, and love that I've received from this family is overwhelming and um, it fills me with astounding gratitude when you realize you are uh, exactly where you're meant to be when you're with yeah. these people and I can't I can't even go into it I'll get emotional but they have been so amazing in so many ways right from Mr. Tom Luce to every single person sitting here with me and uh, so it, it's 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 been amazing to uh, awesome. have support yeah um, Robert it's the last question um, Jesus alluded um, not not the savior but the one on the show he alluded last season that the world is about to become bigger so what new characters or faves from the comics can we expect this season and what can greg nicotero create for us next oh uh, gosh i want to just spoil it because it's gonna spoil be it. Come spoiled on. in like there's no an press hour here. or two there's no press here robert scott scott's saying no Spoil. So, uh, I say spoil. it's the um, make stuff up. Yeah, okay, make sure. Stuff up. No, uh, uh, there's all kinds of great stuff coming this season, and uh, uh, we got a big hint with there's a uh, hint in the, in the uh, trailer. No, 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 there's a we there's a hint in the, last... in the trailer. Yeah, there's a hint in season six. Uh, you know, yeah. where, where, where are Morgan and Carol going? Who are these these knights that are showing up on these horses in this in this armor? That I don't know what's going happy. on here. So, we yeah. know, we know, yeah. Gail, that we know already, right. Who knows? I don't know. Maybe. We know. Maybe, we know. maybe, maybe, maybe there's going to be another character with dreadlocks on the show. We'll see. Oh, you know what? I heard, I had a friend that went in for a mystery character, and I told him who it was. Don't look at me, Scott. I do what I want. Um, okay, I'm going to turn it over after this last question to, to Greg. How long does a hero walker take to create? Uh, we're, we're around hour and 45 minutes. Really? We did some amazing, amazing stuff this season so far. We're going to preview a couple... Uh, walkers uh, in, in a few hours, but 
it's been exciting. I mean, the writers come up with great gags, mm. and we never do gore for the sake of gore. Right. Uh, it always filters into the story, and mm -hmm. the fact that we collectively continue to keep coming up with stuff that we haven't seen before. Uh, I, I know we did a we did a walk around Wednesday that my makeup crew came up and said this is the Best coolest makeup we've, we've ever, ever done. done. And by the way, they're nominated for an Emmy again this year. Woo! Thank you, thank you. And our, our visual effects team. Uh, I, I do want to just say one quick thing. This group of people up here, I mean, seven years. I don't think any of us would have imagined seven years ago when we came to premiere uh, Walking Dead at Comic-Con that we would still be here doing it. Uh, the premiere episode, uh, these guys showed up with the same level of passion and commitment uh, as if it was day one. And I, I couldn't be more proud of... Uh, being associated with these fine producers and these amazing, amazing actors. Awesome. And I will tell you, they fucking killed it in the first episode. It's amazing. So, no pun intended. Okay. Uh, by it, I mean, wait, no, never mind. <laughs> Dave Albert, I love you. Okay, so um, now we're going to turn it over to you guys. You love I me love back? You, too. you love me back? Awesome. Okay, uh, am I picking? You right here, I love your shirt. You go. For sure, I think I think without a doubt, watching the first episode, you will be riveted. It's a roller coaster. You every emotion that you can imagine feeling, you will feel it. Uh, the fact that we led right up to that point with everybody on their knees and being completely broken, you think they're at the bottom, but there's a lot further for them to go. Uh, and uh, these guys, again, it, it was, it was a, the hardest shoot uh, by far that we've ever done because it was just intense. So. Who else? You in the back by the curtains over there. Yes, you. Yeah, you. Do you guys still have the parties to mark when someone's leaving the cast? It's I, you know what? I'm going to say something. I'm going to look at everybody and see how they... It's this, it is so intense for us that it's like this super private thing. <laughs> uh, which, that laugh sounded really goofy. Um, no, but it's, I'll just say, it is so intense for us that we do mark the occasion, but it feels weird even talking about it. All right. Because um, it, it was an intense night. Okay. Right here in the front, dear. Hi. Uh, no one's safe on the show. Could it continue if Rick dies? Absolutely. I think that was always uh, the intention. I mean, I'm speaking on behalf of Robert Kirkman, but um, we could do it without him. Uh, yeah. Okay. Uh, <laughs> you know why? <laughs> Shut up. Uh, but I think you know it was sold to me by my agent that it was uh, it was seen through the eyes of Rick, and then it would turn into an ensemble. Oh, is that what you're? They saying? lied, plainly. It's uh, and I coined the phrase a one ensemble, you know. But fortunately, <laughs> fortunately, we have a, a a new guy on the block over here who my my wife is very happy because he gets all the lines, <laughs> and, uh, and and I've had a bit of time off. Ah. So. Uh, yeah, welcome to the Negan show. Yeah. <laughs> hey, little mama in the back. Yes, you. You're the only little mama in here. Which of these many, many, many dead people who the Walking Dead were the most gut-wrenching for all of you? Ooh. Baby Sophia Peter. was gnarly. That was yeah, a pretty was a big one. one. She was yeah. already dead. That was nothing. Robert Kirkman. <laughs> Be kind uh, to the baby. Uh, Noah? <laughs> that was rough. See? Oh, you're, you're awesome. He's got you're fire. Awesome. He's got fire. I dig it. So are we going with Sophia? Is that the group decision? Uh, oh, come on. So that, that was an incredibly well-asked question. Somebody has to answer here. For, for me, as a fan of the show and being, at the time, a fan of the show and just joining the show was Herschel. Woo! It was, it was brutal. They're all painful for me. Everybody else kind of deserved it. What? You know, the interesting thing about the deaths are every single one of them is a little different. You know, when Tyrese went, mm. that entire episode sort of s 
you got to get into his head. Mm -hmm. And then you have Beth, which was quick and random and brutal. Oh. Every, every uh, event plays out differently. But the good thing about it is, you know, we were talking earlier, there's, fortunately they're still alive. We get to see them and hang out. We saw John Bernthal last night. So it, it's kind of interesting, the, the family that we create and that we continue uh, to see them and hang out with them. But, you know, uh, even if they're dead, we still, I, Herschel's head's in my office, so I... Yeah, especially with the actors, it, it is, you know, just to use sort of a, a metaphor of the time, they're kind of like Pokemon. They sort of evolve. You know, they're Charmander at one point, <laughs> but then there's Scott Wilson at another. Oh my God. So. Next question. Oh yeah, right here. Yeah. Hello. Oh, oh, Afterlife, yeah. Yeah, I love that. Yeah. It's a Brit show. Is that okay? Can we, can we cross pollinate? No. No. No, it's never going to happen. Uh, you guys still have Obviously. Uh, you heard it here first. Uh, no, my, uh, my loyalties only reside with this show and this show alone. Who's next? In the cute little shirt here. You right here, lady. Yes. That's you. Yeah, I like your shirt. It's cute. Shane had sex with your wife. Yeah. <laughs> Is that advice? <laughs> Information. Yeah. I don't know if they can give advice. Daryl had sex with your wife as well. <laughs> Get a lighter jacket during the summertime. Uh, <laughs> can you give me that one back? Oh, yeah, I switched it. Like this is the better one. I know. <laughs> Um, wear shorts. Wear shorts, yeah. yeah. Was that yours? No, but I wore them. But right? <laughs> don't stop anywhere. Just don't stop. Keep going. Honestly, just wear less layers. That's, I, I think, I, I think, I'm not trying, I'm not trying to trash the, the wardrobe here, but I mean, they do a great job, but they put us in like five layers of clothes. <laughs> so many layers. <laughs> <laughs> a lot. But if, but if you got bitten by a walker and they can't bite through all the layers, you'd live. Yeah. So there you go. There's that. Even There's though the that. actors are sweating their asses off. Yeah. So. <laughs> next question? Or anyone else got a... Okay, next question. Sure, sir. Back there. Exactly. <laughs> I don't think I like your attitude, buddy. Everybody here? Well, I would say, I mean, yeah, I, the thing that always drew me to this show, and I think that, like, before I was on it, and what I think is being beautifully done still uh, in terms of the narrative arc is that it is an exploration of a war zone in so many ways. Mm. And uh, it's really hard to have really simplistic moral, you know, standards <laughs> when you're dealing with a world that is hostile. So in terms of what they did, yes, it was, one could look, you know, everything's 2020, you know, once you past that moment, but, you know, in terms of what happened, they were actually trying to help a situation mm -hmm. not happen, and they were, they have a lot of experiences of people doing really terrible things who they trusted, and uh, they shouldn't have trusted these people, actually, uh, so it was smart, but it was also, uh, you know, they didn't realize the magnitude of who they were up against. So I don't know, I mean, it's, it's war, and it becomes a very tricky thing to be able to, you know, sit in a cool room here and not be in a zombie apocalypse and say, y'all messed up, you know, because what would you do? Right, and also, don't you guys think, press and everyone, through the eyes, you can take this trip through any other group of people, and they would be a villain or a hero at different times. That's what I love about the show personally, that it's all perspective. And right now, there are groups, so we love what they do, right? But if someone else watches, because even from Negan's standpoint, they're the bad guys. They came in shooting people and killing people, so it's all perspective. Um, you had a question, yeah, here? In the front? Yes. Well, the first part was, how do I learn all that shit? 
I'm, I don't know. Um, yeah, I put post-its all over Andy's head and everyone else's head. No, it just means I don't sleep while we're shooting. It's a constant process because, you know, Robert likes Negan to talk. Um, will we hear some bad language? As often as possible. Yeah. Yeah. It's hard to be Negan without swearing up a storm. Maybe. You don't know. <laughs> I mean, I realize you're hip on everything, but you don't know. Negan might fucking change. <laughs> I mean, we, we... I love you. We did, we did have s'mores and sing Kumbaya. Yes. That could be how it ends. Could be. Maybe he takes out one of his own. Maybe he changes his mind. That's a good idea. If you guys Mid-swing. Yeah, mid-swing. He's Pause. He hits one of his people. Please. Okay, uh, any other questions? <laughs> Yo, yeah, right, well, you, you want to pick, right, let's get him, yeah, right there, in the front. We can see that this is somewhere it's like, everyone's very friendly. Is that something, what is the egg and, and the chicken question? Is it, you, are you a family because of the show, or the show made you a family? Does that make sense to you? You're a sparkly family. Cool. I, 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 no, you go. No, you go. See, this is what we do. They share. Um, I think that we have, we had a germination of a show with Andy and Sarah Wayne Callies and Laurie Holden and John Bunthal and Norman and Steven and, you know, not everybody's here, but something sprouted um, and it attracted a feeling amongst all of us and a work ethic that these fine people established. And when you get a taste of that, like Josh said right at the beginning, when you get a taste of working in that way, you you create you create that so strongly that that either happens and changes to new people that come in, or they come in like that. But you can't you can't taste that and not want to continue that way. So we are extremely grateful and blessed to have the story that we have and to have the team spirit that we have. Yeah, I, I agree, and I think I, I think it's um. I think that I've never really uh, done my best work when I'm scared. Fear mm. isn't uh, an asset to mm. what I do. I think fear is not a good look anyway in the bigger, wider world. But um, I, so uh, we all just linked arms, looked at each other, and I said, "We're doing a zombie show. I don't know how this is going to look." And we jumped off a cliff, and the parachutes opened, and and it's kind of cool being back here because I remember vividly the first time the trailer was shown. Uh, seven years ago, and I felt sick and nauseous, and I felt, after 30 seconds, I heard the noise from the hall, and it was a resounding sort of positive reaction, and I just thought, I understood what Comic-Con was about, I understood what our show was about in that moment, uh, and uh, the responsibilities we have to you guys, the fans, and, and the rest of the cast, and it's a beautiful journey that we're on, man. I love it, and um, I love the people sat either side of me. Yes. One more. We have a quick, yeah. In the blue back there. Uh, what's your response to the uh, huge uh, international show? How, how people rate the show? Well, I'm more, I'm more worried about glitter bomb at the moment. <laughs> <laughs> he deserved it. <laughs> I, I mean. I think what Lauren said and what Andy just said, I think if you're gonna care about people in, a, in an apocalypse, if they don't care about them, each other, then you're not gonna feel it either. I think yeah. that's the heart of the show and that's you know, the, the stuff that we get from Scott and from Robert and everybody else. And it, it, that glue is what people wanna tune into and, and watch happen. They wanna watch us connect and fight for each other and, these are your feet on the ground and who you're going to stick up for and what teams you're going to make and that's it's the beauty of the show i think one of the beauties yeah sure andy what advice can you give to john snow to lead the white walkers <laughs> sorry <laughs> sorry what advice for dealing with white walkers yeah. well, to well, john is snow is who is a character on game of thrones oh. played by kit harrington help john snow with the white walkers and the white walkers are a threat to Westeros. A big threat. Yeah. I mean, it even caused the wildlings yeah. to, to join align forces, with the guys to join on the wall. forces with people Anyways, they fight. Anyways, thoughts. 
keep Help your head, John Snow. Keep your head down. Uh, we're all infected. I mean, I. I well, how do how do you feel about Dragon Glass? Yes, come on, being Scott. the primary we catch up in my hiatus. I haven't watched the show. I'm sorry. Wait, is it about scandal? <laughs> no. Oh, oh, the motorcycle show, right? Um, right. I don't know. It's fun. I, you know, it's. I mean, this is my first priority right here. Um, that is fun. And like, I got to do a fun thing, and uh, you know, I got to hang out with Peter Fonda, and you know, do it. Was, it's fun. I, I hope so. I don't know. Will you ever do a sidecar episode, and may I be in that sidecar? Of course you can. Yeah, absolutely. And you know, this is legally binding. Okay, moving on. Next question. <laughs> Uh, let me get someone that has it. I'm going to come to you if no one else has No one? We have them right here, everybody. What do you want to know? All right. Okay. Yes, young man. The best bit about Doc is... Be careful. His shirt says Spoiler TV. Ooh. He's telling you who he how is. did he feel going into 701 exactly how we felt at the end of 616 uh, um, you know it's we're picking up kind of directly where you last saw him so mid swing he's feeling like I hope I connect <laughs> <laughs> solidly <laughs> it hurts so much okay we have two more questions you guys who's got good ones sure yeah, hold on. Yes. So this is other you to uh whatever you uh whatever you want to do on in the show. What uh what do you want to do? <laughs> is there anything on the is is this it? Is there anything on the show that you haven't done that you want to do? Could that is that it? Yes, okay. So anything that you haven't yet done on the show that you would want to do, if you could pick your next adventure, choose your own adventure. We really want to do a musical number, I think. Oh, <laughs> I love a musical. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Anyone else? <laughs> uh, find out if Abraham really is still in love with Rosita. Because, oh, uh, that's important. <laughs> I'm, just, I'm still in love with Bob. It's okay. <laughs> it's more I love her, not I'm in love with her. No, I want a really big fight. Bigger, 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 bigger. Yeah. That'd be amazing. I, um, I would love to ha have Eugene dig up Rick's wife's body. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that went over like a turd in a punch bowl. We just thought there was more. What was he going to do? <laughs> he ends. <laughs> no, we'll, just, we'll end it on a cliffhanger. No, that's it. So that's, no, you're not going to finish the sentence. I love it. Anyone else want to chime in? Okay, last question to my friend who started this off. Let's go. I think that everybody hates the bad guys. I think we're going to break the mold on that one. This hates or loves? What, well, I mean, someone was talking about perspective and and who's a villain and who's yeah. not. I mean, I think from Negan's perspective, certainly he's not a bad guy. And I think what's different about him is kind of this charisma and sense of humor that he has, even though there is a sense that he could kill you at any given second. But there is something about him that I think may draw some of you in that even if you hate him, you may, he'll make you smile occasionally, I think. Norman? Not really. No, no, not really. <laughs> but he's different. I think he's different than any character I've certainly seen uh, on the screen. Um, and I think that's a testament to Kirkman, so maybe he could answer it. What's different about this dude? Why are you going to like him? Uh, because he's so awesome. I don't know. I mean, um, I, was I, 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 I don't know. The character, and especially the way you portray him, is so warm and engaging uh -huh. while 
<laughs> threatening and terrifying. Yeah. You know, you you don't want him to kill you, but you are engaged in the entire scenario, and you're like, I I I don't want him to stop talking. That's true. Uh, and and because of that, I think you aren't necessarily into his actions, but his character is, I think, going to be very well loved, despite what he does. Can I add something to that yes. about Jeffrey? Is yeah. as warped as the experience of sixteen was. Um, and you had so much dialogue, and it was really crazy. But we're sitting there, and in the moments when Negan is trying to get you on board with how much fun he's having, with what he's <laughs> doing, and you're suffering, and you're playing pain even more than what you're feeling, but he's saying stuff, and you're like, oh, oh mate, okay, he just, wants a fr he just wants us to be friends with him. He just wants <laughs> us to, to agree and support what he's doing. And then you're like, no, no! So, it's it's a testament to you. Yeah. Yep. Well, there's also this very interesting logic to him. You know, I mean, what he's saying, and that I mean, it really kind of makes sense, especially because we are in a zone where there are no rules. The rules he brings to the table horribly are horribly logical, and it, it, that's also really disconcerting and you know, titillatingly complex. So nice. Well, She's a playwright. See those words? I'm just saying. Anytime you can throw titillating into She's a conversation, brilliant. I'm happy. I have never used without you, too. I have never used titillating Lee in my life, and Denai just dropped it like it was nothing. All right, so you guys, this has been awesome. We have to ask these wonderful people to say their goodbyes so that they can go on to their panel. And then we have another group of wonderful actors coming up here. I love all of you, and I hope to see you soon. Do you love me? You mean it? Oh, you guys. It's so great to see you all. So can we give a round of applause? And you guys, don't go anywhere because Outcast is coming up immediately. All right? Thanks, guys. This was fun.